But now that I've heard these questions, they're phenomenal. So let me just say one more thing to yeah. all the people that are asking questions on my Facebook group or page or whatever mm -hmm. you're on, is that when all is said and done, rather than asking me or any other quote-unquote expert mm -hmm. the answer to your questions, try asking yourself the question and listening deeply for your own response. Mm -hmm. And you're going to find that you're sitting on top of your own genius, your own luminosity of being. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the answers to your questions are going to come to you, but they may not come to you as cognitions or as thoughts or as information. They'll come to you as a feeling, mm. a feeling tone for what is wise action? What is a wise livelihood? What is a wise way to live in this world? Yeah. And then trust that because that's coming out of something that's coming out of your DNA, out of your deepest humanity. Yeah. And if it's causing, if it's cause, if it's in the direction of well being and kindness and compassion, you know you're in the going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And if it's causing harm, and you can be mindful enough to know that you're actually creating casualties, whether it's yourself or other people by your actions or your even your thoughts and your speech, then uh, examine that and write, maybe write yourself a restraining order. Uh, that's not a wise direction to go in mm -hmm. and go in the other direction. Yeah. And then life will become your meditation teacher. That's the real, again, bulkwood against all this trivialization and commodification and the selling of mindfulness mm -hmm. and the hyping of mindfulness. That's, that's the real bulk word against it, mm. is your own authenticity, your own life lived as if it really, 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 really mattered. Yes. And it does. Mm -hmm. And I like to say, more than you think. It, mm. it does more than you think. And it does more than you can possibly think. Yeah. Because thinking is not all that's cracked up to be. <laughs> and if you're in a student or you're in education, please know that... You know, a, a lot of educators uh, are really beginning to reflect on that interior education, which is not merely the accumulation of information <coughs> or even knowledge. And now knowledge, like all world information, is in some sense at our fingertips, although a lot of it's probably wrong. But there's no, using, there's no real reason to even accumulate knowledge unless it leads to understanding. Yeah. And what is understanding? Well, understanding itself is to appreciate how everything is in relationship with everything else. That's mindfulness. Mm. And then that leads to wisdom. Yeah. And that wisdom leads to liberation from misguided notions about who you are. Because e the personal pronouns are referring to something far deeper than what we usually construct as a narrative about me yeah. and my life. And when you see deeply into that and write yourself in some sense a restraining order or it just evaporates on its own, then that's a, a moment of freedom. That's a moment of incredible creativity because you're no longer shackled by your own, um, you know, entrained habits of mind that just accumulate uh, because uh, our culture has really emphasized the outer and outer accomplishment mm -hmm. at the expense of who's doing all the accomplishing. Yeah. The inner. And when the, there's no inner anymore, no outer anymore, no self, no other, uh, in any kind of reified way, then you're really in touch with the full dimensionality, as I put it, of being human mm -hmm. and deep interconnectedness. So the last thing I'll say is that journalists often ask me, well, tell me in one word, what is mindfulness? Because <laughs> everybody's talking about it. Just give me one word, for yeah. God's sake. And so I try to take that seriously, and I say, well, I can say it two different ways. One is that it's awareness. Mindfulness is awareness. You already have it. You don't need to acquire it. What, what, what you need to acquire is access. You need to cultivate greater access to your awareness because our default mode is just thinking and emoting all the time. Yeah. So one is awareness, or you could say, if you'll give me another word, pure awareness, two words. But the other is relationality. 
okay? How you are in relationship to everything. How you experience experience itself. We say, I have a body. Who's saying that? Is it the body saying it? My mouth is mouthing the words. My mouth is part of my body. My tongue is part of my mouth. The air is coming out of it. When you start to trace it back, who the hell is doing that and how? If, I, if it was up to me to actually know how to actually vocalize anything, I wouldn't be able to complete the sentence. Yeah. So that's a gift in a certain way. And it's like, well, is that part of John Kabat-Zinn or not? Yeah. Well, of course it is, and it's part of every single person on the planet. Mm -hmm. But we don't appreciate how, what miraculous beings we actually are. Yeah. So the meditation practice actually uh, allows us to see this relationality that who am I, you know, in relationship to inner experience, outer experience, social experience, intellectual experience, there's no end to it. Yeah. And then in the end, it's like pure awareness, embodied, pure embodied awareness. Yeah. Have fun, guys. That was brilliant. <laughs>